the decision that we make should be flexible enough, maybe agnostic enough, that it will adjust to whatever it is emerging in the space. And one example would be with uh, interoperability protocols. Now we're talking about MCP. This is the standard protocol for agents to communicate with applications. One year from now, we don't know, but we do now make the decisions that will allow us by design to adapt whatever is to come. You know, we can help them provide the proper tools for them to take those agents, meet them where they are, and integrate that within UFL. Thanks for joining me, you say, Sure thing. Why don't we dig into it? Let's get started with uh, and talk about coded agents. Tell me what they are, why people should care about them. Yeah, sure. Uh, and they might seem sometimes intimidating, right? And uh, let's go ahead and demystify them. Because, you know, in this spectrum, uh, we have agents, which are a fancier name for contextualized LM calls for uh, uh, reasoning and tool calls for taking action. So those are agents. Uh, coded agents are agents that you would author, you would develop, you write in code. And you iPad coded agents in a more simplified view are uh, agents authoring code that are natively fully integrated within your path as a agent process within the platform. Now, to get a bit more specific, you would develop maybe these agents in an agent framework like Lama Index or Langchain, and then like to integrate those into the UI path using the UI path Python SDK so that you can access resources like assets, buckets, contest grounding, LM gating, and so on. And then you can make that code a native UiPad package using the command line tool. And finally, with that package, you can deploy it within UiPad such that it is orchestrated, governed, and uh, enterprise ready. You know, when we talk about a coded approach versus a low coded approach, and we think about your role as a product manager, what are the key differences? What kind of springs to mind about the differences between those? All right, so we do have a way of thinking about this and a way we frame them. And uh, it would be with this essential question. So if you are comfortable writing and maintaining code, then we suggest that you should go ahead with the uh, coded route. Wherever if uh, you're not comfortable with that, then maybe you can start with low code. And there is the middle ground as well. And the middle ground would be, if you might be comfortable writing and maintaining code, but you want to prototype rapidly to see some evaluation and to uh, speed up on some atomic agents. Uh, and for such cases, low code would be a perfect uh, uh, solution for that. Now, what I want to say is that they might seem intimidating. It's code after all, and even in uh, during Fusion, we've heard like, do we have to learn this and do we have to learn that? And yes, they might seem intimidating. However, with uh, LM-based tools uh, and coding uh, agents, uh, the barrier to entry lowers. Uh, and we've seen that the authoring gap between low code and coded with vibe coding tools is narrowing as we go. And this trend will uh, just continue in this direction. So as a product manager, tell me a little bit more about your role in relation to coded agents. How does that differ from other roles and, and kind of what are you working on? What's your focus? Yeah, and I think your question is if it's really different uh, and yeah. In comparison to low code, the coded <laughs> approach, yeah, and how does that change? Thanks for asking because uh, truly it's something that we, I, I had and we as a team had to adapt to. It's a super fast paced uh, uh, environment. It's an early adopter space uh, after all, and we are all learning in this space. So on one side, the challenge is that we have to meet them, the uh, developers, where they are. Yeah. Right. So that's why that is my constant concern to see what are the emerging trends, what are they adopting, such that you know, we can help them provide the proper tools for them to take those agents, meet them where they are, and integrate that within UiPath. Because we know that with UiPath as a platform, we are uniquely positioned once that we bring the agents within UiPath, then we do provide uh, best-in-class tool to orchestrate them, to govern them, and to make them enterprise ready. But on our side, we should always keep an eye on the trends and what are the tools that you use, such that we uh, double down on that and make it easy for them to integrate with UiPath. So that's one part. And second one, uh, it's maybe even more important than that, that we make the right choices, uh, such that, uh, you know, the development uh, developer community 
is um, meritocratic. Uh, they are for real. Uh, they do adopt whatever uh, solution is best, more efficient, that arrives in time, that serves the purpose best. This is uh, where we have to meet them. And we want to make sure that every decision uh, we do make, we deliver on the promise to be open and flexible and future-proof, no lock-in, and that we do provide on this promise that we are a good fit now, but we are a good fit for what is to come, even though it sometimes may not know what is to come. So the decision that we make should be flexible enough, maybe agnostic enough, that it will adjust to whatever it is emerging in the space. And one example would be with uh, interoperability protocols. Now we are talking about MCP. This is the standard protocol for agents to communicate with applications. One year from now, we don't know, but we do now make the decisions that will allow us by design to adapt to whatever is to come. With kind of these emerging trends and this quick changing pace in the environment, there's a lot of terms that come up. There's a lot of different kind of terminology or agent types, conversational agents, coded agents, low code agents. Where does coded agents, where do they fit in the, the larger ecosystem of agentic automation? Mm -hmm. So coded agents, first of all, I mean, maybe this is the most important point, they do deliver on the UiPath mandate to, to be the platform of choice, open, flexible, and securely governed. If you look at the value proposition of coded agents, it's a direct match with the uh, promise that we have from a UiPath perspective. Mm -hmm. On top of that, uh, one principle that we have is that uh, coded agents are first-class citizens, so uh, they inherit all the governance, their orchestration, uh, the monitoring part of the platform. It, all the good parts of the platform are 100% by design, by default, inherited by coded agents. Uh, secondly, uh, yeah, we have different flavors, as you mentioned. We have conversational agents and we have uh, low-code agents. And the promise and the mandate on our side is that we will preserve feature parity within uh, these approaches, be it on traces, for instance, and so on. But also, uh, we do treat agents equally after deployment. So operationally, after deployment, agents are agents. Uh, and, and, and thirdly, from a developer experience, one might think that the two approaches, low-code and coded one, are uh, distinct, separate, and once you make a decision, you're uh, stuck with that. Uh, however, we have a different vision, and we do deliver on that vision. And the vision is to have them integrated and coherent. Now, they are not unified because obviously they are different approaches, but however, uh, for instance, we already know that in the coding, uh, experience, you can get the UiPath context directly into code and to access assets, buckets, uh, context running, as I mentioned. You can run and test locally uh, as well and have that experience there. You don't have to go to the UiPath platform. And then you can even see the trace of the full history of a run you can see in code. And now, after that, one can take that uh, code and push it to the platform to go alongside other agents like conversational agents and low code agents. And the experience continues and it is integrated such that one can define evals in studio and use them locally, or maybe the other way around, use and define evals locally and use them uh, in studio and reuse them across multiple agents. On top of that, uh, as uh, mentioned, the authoring experience between low code and coded is, you know, clo closing and uh, with vibe coding tools, we are getting closer to uh, narrowing the gap between, uh, be between the two. Um, and lastly, the vision is to maybe even move from one experience to another. One might start with low code and then convert to coded and continue to build and expand from that point on. I know you speak to customers quite regularly. Where are we at today with coded agents? And then what are some of the key kind of strategic investment themes and focuses for the product as we move forward? Yeah. Uh, we have coded agents in production with real data made, making critical uh, decisions. Uh, so we have been fortunate enough to see this entire road from starting with a bunch of ideas and the need and framing that need such that we have these that will provide value and there is no way to know every step in advance. So we could not RPA that. So the question was, are we lost in that uh, maze or is there a way out? And the answer is yes, there is uh, a way out. 
and coded agent are, are supercharged with a level of control and flexibility that truly deliver on this agentic promise. And they give you the methods, the means to take control, uh, to adjust to that complexity, to have that full flexibility, to be integrated in your uh, pro dev life, life cycle such that you can deliver on, on that promise. And uh, about what's on the horizon, there are a lot of things, some of them, I will mention some of them, I'm not at liberty to <laughs> mention right now, but on the build experience, we will, as uh, mentioned, uh, fully integrate with uh, studio and solutions so that one can take uh, the code locally and make that part natively part of a solution. Also, we will support coding agents with um, uh, protocols like Agents MD. Uh, that would be super important. Uh, I also mentioned Evels, that's also coming. In terms of runtime, one will be able to run this on automation suite. And um, I know that we discussed about MCP, and this is a hot topic, and that's around the corner to be G8. It has been in public preview for quite a while, but it'll soon become GA. And last but not least, uh, we'll have uh, conversational coded agents. Well, maybe these are the, the highlights and the next thing to come. Thanks for taking the time. Are there any final words, anything you want to end on? Uh, yeah, so I just want to make the very clear point that uh, coded agents are um, much more approachable than they might seem. Yeah. And once uh, one gets to test them out and to make the first samples and take the first steps, it hugely pays off with the level of control and flexibility that they provide. Great.